Hi, and welcome to Season 4 of Beyond Teaching, brought to you by the Psych Sessions Network. This series is hosted by Susan Nolan from Seton Hall University, Adyinka Akinsular smith from City College of New York, City University of New York, Asani Sewell from LGS Legacy Weight Diabetes Institute, and yours truly, Eric Landrum from Boise State University. For now, the Psych Sessions podcast, Beyond Teaching, is all about the teaching, research, and clinical skills that psychological scientists need to know about to be successful. You know, all the survival skills needed to thrive in the academic or clinical workspace beyond your formal graduate school training, all the stuff that we were never taught while we were in the graduate school classroom. For season four, we have 12 episodes in store for you with a weekly release starting July 2022 and delightfully stretching into October 2022, helping you make that transition from summer to fall, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, that is, whether you are on the semester system or the quarter system. What's in store? We'll discuss the importance of staying up to date, helping students with personal statements and spark birds, student researchers, what a unionized campus looks like, a peek at the life of adjuncts, adjunct faculty from two different perspectives, interacting with the media, uh-oh, cleaning out your office, and it might not be one of the four of us you thought it would be, <laughs> saying yes or no, and Maria Banford's advice about that topic, ascension and doctoral versatility, dealing with professorial conflicts, and taking tenure out for a spin and career sustainability in the face of the great resignation, or what you might call the big quit. In season four, we also had guests join us for three of the 12 episodes. I'm not going to tell you who or which episodes. That way you'll be curious and you'll want to listen in in order to satisfy that natural curiosity that you have. So there. Please enjoy season four of Beyond Teaching. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Beyond Teaching. For now, there are two, there may be three. I'm Eric Landrum from Boise State University, and I'm with my colleague, Yinka Kinchler smith from the City College of New York, New York City. And we've been chatting about a bunch of things, and we decided we, we're going to share this one, at least for now, maybe more, that we've been chatting about. And so I asked Yinka about if she's received any emails about topics that uh, might have uh, sparked an interest or might be memorable. We're both talking near the end of our semesters. We're recording this early in May. And Yinka just shared a story. And I'm sorry to ask you to repeat, <laughs> repeat it, but if you would for our listeners. Happily. So let's set the stage here, though. Those of you who are in academia, you should know this time of year. It's the end of the semester or the trimester, end, end of your, your, your time teaching, and you are dragging yourself across the finish line to get through, get your coursework done, mark those papers so you can take a nice deep breath. And you get requests. We get requests all the time. But this is a situation where I had gotten a request in the beginning of the, the semester, one that I had said, thank you very much for asking, but I am loaded up, too many obligations, semester starting, but thank you. And thought I was over and done with that request. And yesterday, interestingly enough, the person must have been watching the academic calendar. <laughs> I get an email saying, hey, remember me? I had asked you for this back in the beginning. And I'm sure, I believe your semester is about finished now. Can I get you to join me? Well, of course, now I'm feeling really guilty, and really bad that I'd said no before. And it is true. In fact, my semester is wrapping up, but I really, really have been hoping to just take a deep breath. But here I am, having said, fine, as long as you don't need me until the end of May. And of course, the deadline for this project is not till the end of June. So 
I said yes. Okay, so there's a there's a few things I would love to unpack with you if if we could. So first off, I truly believe in my heart, and no one has to agree with me that only good people feel guilt. I really mean that seriously. Only good people feel guilty. So I, I want to say that first off. So Yinka, participating in this project, is it does it align with something that you're passionate about? Is it something that that fits with you? This is the thing that in fact it actually does. And when I said no earlier on, it was it was because I was I was overburdened, I was over, overtaxed. But part of it is that they saw a research study that I am reaching out to people to participate in and really kind of honed in on the fact that my study and this piece of work that I do aligns with their project. Will this study help will this will this project help advance your career? Will you be able to put it on your CV for service? Might it lead to research? Is it going to help you build contacts in the community that you want? I mean, yes and no. I mean, it, it, it would be, it, it will be a good thing to do, to participate in and to help out with and to, and to lend my expertise to. Now I'm not expecting it to, you know, be earth shattering for me in any particular way. But I, I think, you know, just in terms of the field and training new clinicians coming up. Yeah. But have you ever found yourself in situations uh, like this? Sarah? I, I will be, I will be happy to answer that, but I, I don't want to leave this mm. one yet. If you don't mind. Mm. Okay. Did they offer, did they offer you cash or an honorarium payment of any type? No. Okay. No. So this is, this is so common because You've come to a level of your career where you have expertise and it's valuable. And what I think this person did, and I don't know the situation, by the way, I don't, mm. I don't know the person, I don't know the area, which is fine. To me, it strikes me a little bit manipulative only because the, of the tracking of time. Because yeah. you said no, and someone tracked time, a little bitty bit of a stalking situation, and then contacted you again after you'd said no. Obviously, you don't need me, you don't need my advice, but we're just chatting about advice we can mm -hmm. offer to listeners. A strategy might have been in retrospect, I really don't have the time, but if I was going to make time, I have to stop doing other things. To do that, I have to have a financial incentive. Yeah. So but I think we're about to have another another person join us. So I, you know, I think not. I, I can't do it for free this summer, mm. but I I would be able to do it. I would be able to give you a month's time for a ten thousand dollar donation or ten thousand dollar stipend, and that but, way you could you could you could make the time mm. for it. But Eric, you know what? It just goes back to what we were also talking about in terms of professionals in our field not always thinking business, not always thinking right. finances clearly. And, you know, having this expectation that we are just going to give up our time. And we, we, I mean, I constantly fall into that trap. I'm only beginning to learn now to negotiate up for myself. And clearly I right. did a poor job. Just, well, just well no, I, I, I'm not being critical of you. I'm just saying that. I think no, I am being critical of me. <laughs> academics oftentimes give away their expertise and they should give it away whenever they want to. But it should be their choice and being guilted into it feels icky. And I think colleges and universities are really good at making their faculty feel icky about, about giving it away for free. They ask you to show up for orientation sessions in the summer when you're off contract. They ask you to give talks when you're off contract. And I, I, I wish in the academic community we'd stop doing that so much. So what did you ask me? I don't, I didn't mean to. Well, I was asking about whether you've been in that kind of situation before where you've been asked to do, you know, additional things or that you don't really have time for and, and, and how you dealt with it. Oh, absolutely. And it's taken me a long time to feel better saying no. And, you know, that we have some colleagues around the country who have like a no committee. So for example, when they get asked something, ah. they say, I'll think about it. And they go and they ask their committee members, 
I actually have a no folder in my email account. I where love it. I actually keep track of when I get asked something and say no, I can keep track of it. So I, I have a record of I said no to some things. Sometimes only because my wife thinks I say yes to everything. And I could go and show her if I had to. By the way, mm -hmm. let's welcome Susan Nolan to the mix. Hi, Susan. Hello, Susan. Nice to join you. It's just about the last week of school, so things are unexpectedly cropping up, but you know, the end's in sight. Yeah, and, and that that's a little bit related to what we're talking about. And we are recording, just so you know. And so, yeah, you can I get on this topic of end of the semester and the crunch and you know, the asks that sometimes roll in at the most inopportune times. And so that's how do we, we kind of meander to this topic. So, yeah. And I think saying no sometimes gives you the power to say yes when other things come along. Yes. You know, so it gives, it gives you that bandwidth mm -hmm. to be able to do that. I agree. You can and sometimes you can't say no, especially when things, you know, crop up in a sort of urgent basis and things need to be done. But I think you're talking more about longer term things. Or are you talking about saying no to, I don't know, a makeup exam or an extension? Or are you say, talking about saying no to committee work? Yeah, more about professional I mean, commitments mm -hmm. when you're asked by outside agencies or a researcher, when you're asked to, to give your expertise yeah. that you have honed over time, over mm -hmm. decades, perhaps. And you're asked to give that away for free. I think it's our choice to give that away for free or to ask. And I think the other theme that we talked about before we started recording is that, and this is a generalization, but academics tend not to be good business people. So we don't know when to negotiate for a higher salary or better startup or a better book deal or a better royalty percentage or a better lab space. We're, we're just not trained in business or many of us are not good at it or not comfortable mm. with it. I'm definitely not comfortable with it. And the only times I've really successfully negotiated have been when I've said no to something because it just wasn't worth it. And then they've come back to me. So I wasn't actually trying to negotiate. Mm. <laughs> okay. Think, well, that's what makes that part easier when you <laughs> yeah. don't even really want it. And you're just saying, no, no, no. Exactly. Yeah. Talk me into it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, I, oh, I'm not going to be able to remember the story. There's a comedian, Maria Banford. She was asked to give a commencement speech, University of Minnesota. And at first they asked her to do it for free. And she said no. And then they asked her to do it for five grand. And she said no. And then they asked her to do it for 10 grand. And she said yes. And she felt so guilty. Ah. She, she donated it to some cause that she believes in. But, you know, our organizations have money, typically. You know, deans and provosts have money, typically. Yeah. You know, we're just not used to asking for or holding out for it. Yeah. Susan, how's the end of your semester going? Well, I'm doing the fun things now, the group presentations and the wrap-up days and all that kind of stuff. So today in my intro psych class, we did a, I have a wrap-up activity, but for the first time I did music during it and I had everyone put their happy song in the Teams chat. We were in person and then I just played DJ and I would put up the songs that they had asked for and while we were doing the activity and it was really fun. Did you have to censor any music? I asked them to not put up anything that if somehow a tour group walked in the back, I could get in trouble. Ah. Yeah. Well, and my you're ahead of the time. game. My TAs were actually surprised. They're like, they, they actually did a good job at not doing that, not trying to bait you into playing something. They didn't drop mm -hmm. anything, the F-bomb in it over and over again. No, they didn't do anything like that. Although when I played my happy song for them, they didn't know what it was. What was your happy song? The Kinks, Better Things. And I don't recognize the title. But you know the Kinks. I Yes, I do yeah. know the Kinks. And I oftentimes don't recognize the title, but I yeah. might recognize the two. The you want to sing a few bars? Or no. Few bars? No. Yes. <laughs> I love this new feature on the podcast. <laughs> Susan Nolan, the microphone is yours. Oh, yeah, no. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> 
for that, I need a beer and no recording. <laughs> oh, how about um, you? No, but the key. But there's, uh, there are some fun parts of the end of the semester. The exam parts are coming up next, but there are some fun parts. I, I will say I am, in terms of fun parts, I am excited because we are going to have in-person graduation for the first time in two years. And I am just excited to see graduating students in regalia. And that's always so much fun. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Let's see. I wish I could come up with something I'm looking forward to. I'm sorry. I'm just really negative about this time of year. It's really interesting. I guess I'm going to be the old man who does this. This generation of kids, right? You know, that kind of classic thing that happens, whether you call them helicopter parents. I heard somebody say snowplow parents the other day. With You know, how many phone calls or emails am I going to get from parents about their students' grades? Oh. Yep. <laughs> hmm. I hadn't thought about that one. Well, I mean, with graduate students, you can, maybe you're not getting that. <laughs> but even with the undergrad students. Hmm. Oh, you, you have undergrads as well? This semester, no. But I have in the past. But they're usually undergrads who are upper level who are either third or fourth year graduating. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I'm glad I got to hear the tail end of your conversation. I'm sorry I, I arrived late and look forward to hearing the beginning part. No, that's okay. It'll it'll be a mystery wrapped in an enigma until mm. until it's released. What else? What else is going on? Should we talk about summer plans? Should we talk about is there anything a hot topic? Should we talk about the most <laughs> depressing topic of the week, or should we just leave that alone for another day? Let's go out with a happy sigh. Let's go out with a happy, happy with a happy. Yeah. yeah. Someone go, sing go the, to the kinks to us. Go, go listen to the kinks, better things. Listen to the kinks, better things. Uh, yeah. It's actually, it's a happy song, but it's not that it's happy right now. It's a hopeful song. It's I, like, that's what we all need. That's what we need. We need optimism. We need hope. Yeah. It's the hope for better yeah. things. Pretty dark days right now. Yeah. It's an yeah. appropriate song. I think, I think between can... everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for listening to another episode. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.